Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 8, Lesson 1 on Introduction to Percent. So this is kind of a short unit, four lessons, all right, but they're all about the topic of percent. And percent is an amazingly important idea in the real world. We use it all the time. So without further ado, I want to launch right into it so that we can really start to understand what percents are and how they should just flow naturally from our previous unit working with ratios. So let's get to it right away. All right, here we go. The concept of a percent is one of the most used mathematical tools in the real world, right? From weather to taxes to grades, you hear about percent all the time. And let's get into exercise one where we start taking a look at a percent. Let's do it. On a recent test in English, Jorge scored 17 out of 20 points. His friend Ava has a different English teacher and scored 20 out of 25 points on a similar test. Letter A, why is it difficult to say who scored better on their test? Right. This is actually a really important question, right? Um, you know, Jorge here scores 17 out of 20, right? Ava scores 20 out of 25, so, you know, Ava scored more points. She got 20. Jorge scored 17. Um, so, I mean, why can't we just basically say, well, you know, Ava did better? Pause the video now and try to write something down. All right. Well, it's really simple, right? the tests had a different number of total points, right? So we can't just say, well, you know, Ava scored 20, Jorge scored 17. I mean, if they were taking the same test, then unequivocally, you know, we could say that Ava did better because she scored more points. But the plain fact is the tests, the tests have a different total point values. Let me get rid of the word A. The tests have different total point values. Right? One of them's worth 20, one of them's worth 25. So what we really kind of want to do is we want to kind of compare apples to apples. right? But let's first take a look at letter B. Give a fraction for both Jorge and Ava that represent the ratio of the questions they got correct to the total number of questions do not simplify. All right, well this is simply, this is all just about what it means for one number to be a fraction of another number. So in other words, Jorge scored 17 out of 20 points, so the fraction of points that Jorge got correct were 17 twentieths, right? That's just the fraction he got correct. And likewise, Ava, right? Ava got 20 twenty-fifths correct. Now, before we go on to letter C, imagine going back to those points when you had to think about whether one fraction or another fraction was the larger fraction. And there's various ways to do that, but one really good way of comparing whether one fraction is larger than the other fraction is to ensure that they both have the same denominator, right? Because right? the denominator is kind of like the total number of points. So let's take a look at that in letter C. Let me move this out of the way. Rewrite each fraction in B as an equivalent fraction whose denominator is 100. Show how you got your fractions. Now again, we wouldn't necessarily have to go with a common denominator of 100, but 100's kind of nice. We can kind of picture the number 100 in our heads, right? It's a nice number to just work with. So let's get both of these fractions to have denominators of 100. Let's do Jorge's together and then have you do Ava's on your own, right? So for Jorge, Right, we've got 17 twentieths. To get a denominator of 100, right, we would have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 5. Right, the whole point of that is that 20 times 5 is 100. And then 17 times 5, you know, you might have to do that over on the side of your paper, right, which would be okay. So let me do that just so you know where my numbers came from. So for Jorge, right, getting a 17 out of 20 is sort of the equivalent of getting an 85 out of 100. Remember, 85 one hundredths and 17 twentieths are the same thing. What I'd like you to do now is do exactly the same thing for Ava. All right. Well, remember, Ava got 20 out of 25. Okay, just so that we saw that one more time. 
So let's do the same thing. For Ava, right, she got 20 out of 25. If I want that to have the same denominator, I would need to multiply numerator and denominator by 4, which will give me 100 there, and it'll give me 80 there. So Ava, Ava's performance on this quiz was sort of the equivalent of getting an 80 out of a 100 on a test, Jorge's an 85 out of 100 on the test. So letter D, who did better on the English test, Jorge or Ava, justified based on C? Well, we can now say that Jorge did better. Now, why did he do better? You know, neither one of them took a test out of 100 points, right? But it's very easy to now see that Jorge got a larger fraction of the questions right. He got 85 one hundredths correct, whereas Ava got 80 one hundredths correct. And if you want to think about it as out of 100, it's like Jorge got 85 per 100 and Ava got 80 per 100 points. So who had, did better on the test? Jorge, because that doesn't look like a U and an S. Let me do that better. Because he got a higher or greater or larger fraction correct. Right? 85 out of 100 versus 20 out of 100. Now, what we're seeing in both of these two are literally what we call a per cent. So let's talk about that a little bit. Right? What is a per cent? Right? Well, you've all heard of cents, right? You've all heard of a century, right? So cent, C-E-N-T, literally is an abbreviation that means 100. So a per cent literally means a fraction out of 100. In fact, a percent is the numerator of a ratio whose denominator is 100. The percent, therefore, is the rate per 100, and it's symbolized by this little symbol, which surely you've seen before. So in that last exercise, if you look at it, right, let me just go back a screen, right? In this case, Jorge got an 85%. He got an 85 out of 100, whereas Ava got an 80 out of 100, so she got an 80%. You know, again, we, we wouldn't necessarily need to use the symbol or even the number. You know, we could just be like, oh, Jorge got 85 one hundredths and Ava got 80 one hundredths. But that would be a little bit annoying if every time you got a test or a quiz back and you said, hey, what's my grade on here? Your teacher's like 85 one hundredths, 72 one hundredths. No, your teacher says, oh, you got an 85 percent, 85 per 100. Or you got an 80 percent, 80 per 100, right? That's all a percent is. The number per 100, the ratio, right, where the total is 100. Now, I'm going to keep coming back to that per 100, per 100, per 100. Let's take a look at exercise number two. If six out of ten cats at a shelter have long hair, what percent of the cats at the shelter have long hair? Show the original ratio and then its conversion to a ratio out of 100. All right, so a percent is always the numerator when the denominator is 100. So right now what we know, right, is that the fraction of the animals that are cats, you know, are 6 out of 10. But we want this out of 100. So we need to convert this fraction into one that is out of 100, i.e. that the denominator is 100. That's very, very easy in this particular situation because all we have to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by 10. So 6 out of 10 is the same as 60 out of 100, which means that 60% of the animals are cats. And again, this number and this fraction literally are the same thing. This is just a shorthand way of writing this. So 60% is just a shorthand way of writing 60 one hundredths. That's it. In fact, even the symbol itself, even the symbol itself, this symbol was actually invented with this slash representing the division bar. And believe it or not, these two representing sort of the numbers in the numerator and denominator where the number in the denominator is always 100. All right, let's just keep working with this, keep working with this, keep working with this as a ratio out of 100. 
percent. A percent is the numerator of a ratio whose denominator is 100. All right, exercise number three. 200 people stop by a food stand on a Saturday. Use the double number line below to help answer the following questions about percent. So, percents are just specialized ratios, right? They're just a ratio where the denominator is 100. And we worked with equivalent ratios back in the last unit with double number lines. And it's really great because, you know, on this number line we've got the people, 0 to 200, and on this number line we have the percent 0 to 100, right? The whole on a percent is equal to 100. Simple enough. And now reading this double number line is simple. Take a look at letter A. If 40 people buy lemonade while at the food stand, what percent of the people bought lemonade? Illustrate on the number line. Right? Well, this is about as easy as you get, but let's make sure we understand why it's working the way it is. There's my 40 people, right? My number line that has people has 40, and then that's down here at 20%. Right? Now, again, just so that you don't get just too automatic with the number line, because we won't have these double number lines very often, just to be clear, what we're saying, right, is that 40 out of 200 is the same as 20 out of 100. And again, that makes sense. These two fractions are equivalent, right? These two ratios are the same thing. We can go from this ratio to this ratio by scaling down. Remember, ratios can be scaled down or up using multiplication or division. This one can be scaled down by dividing both of those, both the numerator and denominator, by 2. And we've got to have that ratio out of 100. Let's go in the other direction, letter B. If 65% of all people who stop by the food stand order a sandwich, how many people ordered a sandwich? Illustrate on the number line. All right, well, I think that you can do this one on your own. Pause the video. It should be really quick and write down an answer. All right, well, I got to move the screen up just a bit, but 65% is right here on the number line, and that means 130 people. Again, I just want to keep coming back to this. The idea is, right, the total number of people was 200, and 130 out of 200 is the same as 65 out of 100. Again, by that scaling down by a factor of 2, or by a factor of 1 half, however you want to think about it. All right. We want to keep working with this, keep getting those ratios that have denominators of 100 to answer percent problems. Sometimes, scaling a ratio so that its denominator is 100 can take a little bit more work. You know, specifically, we might have to, let's say, scale down our ratio to get it in its simplest form, and then maybe scale it up so that it has a denominator out of 100. So let's take a look at a really nice example of that in exercise number four. In a classroom of 32 students, 24 of them own a cell phone. Letter A. Write the fraction of students who own a cell phone in simplest form, i.e. the ratio of those with cell phones to the total number of students. All right, why don't you go ahead and do that? That's pretty easy. Pause the video for a moment. All right, so the fraction of students who own a cell phone is always the number that own it divided by the total number. Now, just for a moment before we kind of reduce this, just for a minute, Say I asked you what percent students, what was the percentages of students who owned a cell phone? It would be pretty hard to scale this fraction so that it had a denominator of 100, right? Because it would be a bit confusing about what you should multiply 32 by to get 100, right? I mean, I, I would even have to work on that quite a bit. So this scaling would be quite challenging. On the other hand, right? If you did what was asked for in letter A, you could scale this ratio down by dividing both of these by 8, and you'd have the simplest ratio of 3 to 4, or 3 fourths. Right? So 3 fourths of the students in this class own a cell phone. Now let's take a look at letter B. What percent of students own a cell phone? Convert your fraction from A to one with a denominator of 100 to answer. So again, it's, it's basically saying, look, if we, if we took this fraction, and instead of having 32 students in class, we had 100 students in class, how many would own a cell phone? That's always it, right? We've got 32 students, but what if we had 100 students and exactly the same fraction of them owned a cell phone? Well, now we can easily say, well, I've got my 3 fourths, 
right? I want to multiply by something that gives me a 100 in the denominator, right? That's easy enough, hopefully, right? We would have to multiply the 4 by 25. Therefore, if we multiply the 3 by 25 as well, we'll get 75. And that tells me that 75% of the students own a cell phone. And again, coming back to this again and again and again, all we're saying is, all right, 24 out of 32 students own a cell phone. That's three-fourths of the students. If there were 100 students in class that had, you know, where the same fraction owned a cell phone, how many of them would own it? 75 would. So 75 one-hundredths is the same as three-fourths, which is the same as 24 thirty-seconds. All right, let's keep going. Exercise number five. Answer each of the following problems about percent. Show how you found your answers. You may have to reduce your ratio first before converting it to a fraction out of 100. All right, what I'd like you to do actually right now is I'd like you to try both of these problems. Both of them just ask for a percent, a number per 100. Set up your ratios. If you can immediately scale them up or down so that they are a ratio out of 100, do so. If not, simplify the fraction as much as you can. That would be scaling down. Once you've got it scaled down, then scale it up so that it's out of 100. Pause the video now and try both A and B. All right, so letter A. When Francine flips a coin 25 times, it comes up heads 11 times. What percent of the tosses came up heads? Well, all right. So the fraction of the times that it came up heads is 11 25ths. This is one where, number one, we can't scale down that fraction anyway, but we can certainly scale it up so that it has a denominator of 100. And we would do that by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 4, giving us 44 out of 100. That means that Francine correctly predicted whether it would show up heads 44% of the time. That seems kind of reasonable. She should be shooting around 50% of the time, given the way heads, heads and tails work on a coin. So 44% of the time. Now for letter B, it's a little more challenging. Justin got 28 out of 40 questions correct on his quiz. What percent of the questions did Justin get correct? So this is more challenging, right? Because if we look at the fraction that Justin got correct, 28 out of 40, it's not, necess it's not very easy to scale 40 up to 100. Right? It's just not, there's no nice integer whole number that you can multiply 40 by to get 100. On the other hand, right, if I divide both of these numbers by 4, then I get the fraction 7 tenths. All right? And again, I want you to always keep in mind 28 fortieths and 7 tenths are the same fraction. They're the same number, right? But now it's pretty easy to scale 7 tenths so that it's out of 100 because we can just multiply both numerator and denominator by 10. That means we have 70 out of 100. So it looks like Justin got a 70% on his quiz. All right. So if you've ever gotten kind of a quiz back or a test back and you know you got a certain number of points out of a certain number of points and your teacher then has scribbled down 88%, you can now figure out where that 88% came from. Right? You just have to scale your fraction of the questions correct so that it's out of 100 and not out of whatever it was. All right, let's wrap this up. In the last unit, all you did was work with ratios. And for the first like five or six lessons, you worked with ratios, equivalent ratios, ratios in their simplest form and all of that. Percent for all four lessons that we work on in this unit, it's just four, is just a specialized application of what we did in the last unit where you're always trying to get your ratio to be out of 100. The denominator is equal to 100. The numerator, then, is the percent itself. Okay? We're going to work a lot more with this idea in the next lesson, actually in the next three lessons. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.